I decided to become a painter when I saw my grandmother's painting of my grandfather of my grandfather reading a book. Um, pretty pretty brilliant painting from the side. I was also painting some landscapes on a chunk of slate in the Lake District. I spent um, a lot of my time in a sketchbook when I was on holiday with my family. I'd uh, always take a sketchbook and um, be doodling at the least. Um, I was working on art through school. Um, I did some paintings and Toulouse Lautrec. I did some candid copying of Jenny Savile. Um, I did all sorts of studying. I had a great teacher at school, Rod Ashman. At my time at Wimbledon College of Art, um, there were some, it was just wonderful throughout. Um, so many things which I've um, learned so much from. There were brilliant tutors there. Um, it taught me exactly how to approach a painting. Um, and if I ever had a question to ask that lady or man who had the most knowledge in that field of experience, um, it was brilliant developing a group of friends who could be completely and utterly honest with me. Um, so I've got a, a friend in this gallery. Um, my girlfriend's also a painter, um, so I can just bring them in and they're completely honest and say what's good, what's bad, what's awful. Um, and it's that honesty which is so important. I, I say of all the artists um, through history, there's a pretty strong selection, um, but I'd say a battle between Rembrandt and Vermeer, um, where I adore Rembrandt's work, his um, carefree throwing paint around a canvas, um, scratching back into that paint, his etchings are beautiful. Um, and then when you go into a Dutch gallery um, and there's a Vermeer there, then it just shines out around all the others. Uh, whilst there's a lot of brown and grey paint around, Vermeer's bright blues um, and pretty wonderful oranges um, are just beautiful, very calm paintings. Um, in, terms, in terms of people closer to my age, I'd say uh, Nigel Cook, I, I adore his work, that's um, really powerful, he's, he's just completely made up a space of his own um, and just trying to coax other people uh, into his painting, big paintings, filling a wall, um, completely absorbing that person who's come to see it, um, especially the, the figurative ones when he's got... Um, a man clearly with a story to tell. Um, like when I when I have an exhibition coming up, then I'm just spending every hour here. Um, but then one of the, my first, when when I hit a trough, one of my first tactics is to go to a gallery. Um, but when I have a bit of free time, whenever I'm on holiday, the first thing I do is go to a gallery. Um, and when I was on my residency in Derby, I was spending a lot of my time in there. Um, in their Derbyshire gallery, um, and it was full of those Joseph Wright of Derby paintings. I learned a lot about him. Brilliant stuff. T.S. Eliot's Wasteland, I think, um, was something which really excited me because it's a poem that has been ripped into pieces by Ezra Pound and then patched back together. Um, so there are two or three lines which are telling a story and then it just stops abruptly um, and there are big gaps to be filled in um, and so pretty much every line, every other line there was a, just a painting, an image jumping out of it um, and it was just so open uh, having, having looked at other people's reviews of that poem um, or if I just googled one line of that poem there's 50 different explanations of what that line might mean or what there's a link to um, and that's been so brilliantly useful when I'm making a painting. Un Un Unfinished is, is my favourite um, and I think back to Toulouse Le Trek, I always loved his work, looking mm. through old masters, some of their sketches mm. or those paintings that were half finished when they died, um, mm. some of the most wonderful when you can see those, those first mm. thoughts. Um, hitting the canvas and didn't get any further. I think that's brilliant. Um, Jason and Isis Phoenix Arts, they do um, a lot of work where in the field where I have no idea. Um, whilst I can 
stay in my studio and make all that work um, and have a lot of reasoning behind it, it provides me with more time to do that whilst I can um, ask Jason's advice on everything else uh, and ask him to take something and run with it because I have no idea. I do uh, know a couple of uh, Isis Phoenix Arts Parade um, and uh, Eleanor Watson, um, mm -hmm. I know her very well. Um, she's my girlfriend and a brilliant painter um, and one of my key critics as well. Hopefully there's a group of us developing together um, and I hope, I hope it keeps developing like this. Mm -hmm. um, looking forward to meeting several others, um, but I think it's really useful having that fallback where I can um, ask several other people. When my relationship with the Fine Arts Society um, is pretty brilliant. I think first and foremost I feel like a very lucky boy um, and feel that what they were looking for um, straight out of a degree show, um, I, was, I was sitting in a useful pocket there. Um, but they're, they're a brilliant set as well. Um, they, especially Sarah, um, is so helpful and can answer any question um, and has been really efficient with everything. Um, I've, I've had a pretty jam-packed 18 months since graduation. Um, I've been spending all my time um, with a brush in my hand um, and try my hardest to um, put on the strongest work for several shows I've had. Um, so whilst I've been in a residency uh, in Derby for a year, um, which all culminated in, a, in my first solo show out of college um, in their Derbyshire gallery. Uh, I also had a show in the Mal Galleries um, with Ellen Watson. Um, there was just me and her um, filling one of their galleries. Um, I had a show on uh, Albemarle Street um, with the Violet Hour. I had, what else has there been? <laughs> um, I've had a show in the Belgravia Hotel. Uh, I've had a show somewhere else. What a busy boy. <laughs> Where else have I been? Uh, I had an exhibition in Buxton Dome as well, just before um, the solo show opened. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been, I've been a busy boy indeed. Right, this uh, this painting is called April. Um, this is this is one of five of the largest ones, which I'm going to be um, putting up in the Fine Arts Society next week. Um, so I'm pretty sure everything in here is finished now. Um, we've got uh, the largest one over there in the corner. Um, <laughs> this one can't actually remember its name. Just get my book. <laughs> so this one, this one's called "What Are the Roots That Clutch." Uh, all of my titles have been um, plucking a little sentence stanza out of uh, T. S. Eliot's "The Wasteland," um, and it's been really useful to find a title. Sometimes the hardest bit of a painting. Um, this is the hyacinth girl. Um, whilst the light in here might make it glimmer slightly. Um, this is a hyacinth girl in the darkness, um, holding the lights. A great, a great fun reasoning behind portrait chairs. <laughs> it's great fun. Um, then, I've, then I've got this guy. Um, his title. He's the drowned sailor. Um, this is me pulling another story out of the wasteland where there's story after story. Um, this was really getting excited about one and trying to translate it into an image that sort of makes sense but is sort of just my painting on its own. Um, and yeah, I, that one's taken front cover of the catalogue.